I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's wonderful to be with you again on the program. And the just shall live by faith. And you'll find that in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. One of my favorite verses. I want to speak to you today about stepping out and trusting God. It's not easy. Let me tell you something. If it was easy, you wouldn't need faith. Isn't that right? So there's always an, an area in your life that you've got to take a virtually a blind leap. But God likes that and he appreciates that. You know why? Because he knows that you are trusting him. See? And the, and the just shall live by faith. Okay? The righteous shall live by faith. Whose righteousness? God's righteousness. Not yours. Not mine. God's righteousness. When you trust God, He'll do anything for you. And by the way, on that point, He has got no time for good works. He says, your good works and my good works are like filthy rags to Him. You'll see that in the book of Isaiah. He wants you to trust Him like any child. When he trusts his dad, his dad is so happy to help him. So I want to speak to you today about taking a step of faith. Okay? I want to speak to you today about an event that happened in my own life. Remember, personal testimonies are very powerful. You can't argue with them. You either believe me or you disbelieve me because you weren't there. And that's the most important thing about a testimony. There's nothing to argue about, folks. You either believe the man or you don't believe him. And I know you will believe me because you know me. And I've got no cause to tell you a lie. I want to tell you about something that changed my life on the 30th of September, 2012, at about 7 o'clock at night. And while you're thinking about that, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe... In miracles. You see, you have to have faith to believe in a miracle. I don't know how many people have told me when a miracle has taken place on this farm, Shalom, oh, well, that was just a coincidence. That was just a coincidence when the rain came and put the fire out. That was no coincidence. That was the answer to the prayer of faith. God does not answer prayer. God answers the prayer of faith. Always remember that. Like the old lady, remember, who before she went to bed, she looked out her window, there's a big mountain there. She said, Lord, I'm believing that that mountain will be gone in the morning. She closed her curtains, got into bed, went to sleep, woke up the next morning, opened the curtains, and the mountain was there. She said, I thought so. <laughs> she, was never, she never believed it in the first place. I want to tell you the story about the rushing mighty wind. Now, I know many of you have heard about it. Some of you might even have that book. Some of, some of you might have even seen it on video. That gives you more reason to listen up. Because we are living in a time and in an age where we need to see and to believe in miracles. Remember, the original generation of Israelites that were taken out of Egypt with Moses, not one of them made it across into the promised land except two men. Moses didn't even make it. Only two men. Who were they? Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because they believed. Now that's what faith is. Faith is to believe what you cannot see. And the reward of that faith is to see what you believed. Who said that? Augustine. He was an African. He came from Alexandria. He was an incredibly mighty man of God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Correct? That's right. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. By the way, verse 6 says, Without it, without faith, you cannot please God. And he who believes must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Okay, that's verse 6. Augustine said, faith is to believe what you cannot see. 
But the reward of that faith is to see what you believed. And I want to tell you today as a farmer that um, the Lord Jesus Christ is more real to me. Absolutely. He, I mean, look, look what he's done. I mean, we're not going to go down that road. And it's got, by the way, it's got nothing to do with me. It's all to do with him. It's all about Jesus. Just believe. That's all you've got to do. How many times in the Bible did the Lord say to those people that he touched and healed, the woman with the issue of blood, Bartimaeus, the blind man, he said, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Be it according to your faith. Remember what he said about the centurion? The centurion was a Gentile. He wasn't even a Jew. Jesus said, I have not seen any faith in Israel like this ever in my life. He wanted to go to the Roman's house to heal his servant. And the Roman said, no, you don't have to come to my house. Say the word and it'll happen. And of course it happened. So what happened to me? Well, a life-changing experience happened to me. You know, I haven't had the privilege of going to university like a lot of you. And it is a privilege, by the way. I would have loved to, and I would still love to be able to study theology. I love the Word of God. But what I have done, I've been to the school of hard knocks. I've been to the school of life. And God has taught me through many, many encounters about faith. So now we go back to the 30th of September. 2012, I'm in Israel, I'm up in Jerusalem, the most famous city in the whole world, and I've been invited to be the speaker at the Feast of Tabernacles, and their opening ceremony is down at the Dead Sea, 400 meters under the ocean, and we're driving down there, and it's about 7 o'clock at night, and it is 40 degrees, the heat is unbelievable. I remember sitting in the front row, waiting for my turn to go up onto the podium, a big platform with flashing lights. It was a grand affair. I think I drank a liter and a half of water before I even got up there. And it just, as I was drinking, it was just coming out. The ladies were there in their evening dresses. The men were dressed up. It was a fine occasion. Some people, you must think about this, had saved up their whole lives to be able to go to Israel just once to go to the Feast of Tabernacles, to sit looking right onto the platform. Behind the platform was the lake, the Dead Sea. They call it the Dead Sea. Nothing moves in there. It's just full of salt. And the music, I mean, they had, they, they, they've got musicians from all over the world. They've got violinists from the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. They've got singers from Russia. They've got dancers from all over the place. It was amazing. I was, I was totally intimidated. I want you to know that. And the guy that was in charge, the, the MC, who's become a very, very good friend of mine, Dr. Jürgen Buller, who's a German who's got a doctorate in physics. No pressure. <laughs> and here I am with my standard eight education from the farm. Well, after the praise and the worship, and it was amazing, and then they had the flag procession, Every country represented going through. It's amazing. I think they had over 80 nations represented that night. 18 interpreters, interpreting into Russian, Chinese, um, Portuguese, uh, Spanish, you name it. It was amazing. And the procession went past and then came the, the moment for the speaker to come up. And I'll never forget, as I walked up, I walked up the side of the platform. It was a beautiful platform built by some uh, Jewish company and it had those big uh, stands and on the stands they had lights and on the side, on either side, they had these massive screens so that everybody could see and hear. By the way, there was between four and 5,000 delegates from all over the world. It was amazing. There were Brazilians there, Nigerians, there were Americans, Canadians, there were Scots and English and Irish. It was amazing. So now it came my turn. And I was very, very nervous. I can tell you right now, folks. And I walked up the side of the platform and I walked up to Jürgen Buller. And I said, Jürgen, you know, the way I've been taught is that uh, I, I, I'm in total submission to you tonight. I've come as your guest to speak. I will do nothing without your permission. You know what he said to me? 
He said, Angus, you do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. We have been fasting and praying, listen to this, that the Lord will move like a mighty wind. That's all he said. None of us knew anything. I said, thank you. I got up on the platform. I made the introduction. They had a lectern in front. And by the way, this is all on video, so you can watch it. And I took my Bible and I said, can we please, after praying, I always pray before I preach. And I normally get on my knees. The Lord says, I must humble myself before he'll use me. I said, will you turn with me in your Bible to the book of Acts? It's the same scripture I'm going to read to you now. Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to read from verse 1. And this is what it says. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all of one accord. And there was a wonderful atmosphere of oneness that night. All of one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then I stopped. And I took my glasses off. And I closed my Bible. And I put it on the lectern. And I said, I walked around the front of the lectern and I said, Lord, we are in your country. This is Jesus' country. I was so overwhelmed. I was very emotional. I always am when I go to Israel and especially when I preach in Israel because I've got a very good imagination. This is the place where Jesus Christ lived. I'm talking about God made flesh. I'm not talking about a godly man. No, no. I'm talking about God who, made, who said one word and this whole universe came into being. He lived here for 33 years. See? Now, this is all coming back to me. Now, I'm getting very emotional. See? And uh, Emmanuel with us. I stood in the front of the lectern and I said, Lord, please do it again. <laughs> That's what, exactly what I said. And I want to tell you that a wind... Yes, there had been a little bit of a wind before, but a wind started up at that moment and it started blowing so hard that I had to hold my hat in my hands and put my shoulder to the wind, wind, wind so that I wouldn't get blown off the top of the platform. This wind came and my assistant Clive, he said to me afterwards, he didn't know where it came from. And he's also a farmer. He didn't know whether it came from the west or east, just this wind came. It wasn't a whirlwind, it was a wind. It started blowing so hard that the musicians ran up onto the platform to try and rescue their instruments that were going to get blown off the platform, guitars and uh, keyboards, etc. It was an amazing encounter. Those big side screens started tearing. They just got ripped to shreds. This wind started and it started picking up and it got more and more. And I kept saying, come Holy Spirit. <laughs> and the more I said that, the harder the wind blew. Folks, it was Holy Ghost chaos. That's all I can say. Holy Ghost chaos. These ladies in their beautiful dresses, these gentlemen nicely dressed, started running to the front. I didn't make an altar call. I didn't even get a chance to preach the gospel. All I said is, Lord, do it again. I want to say to you, it started to rain. Now listen to me. It never rains there. If you look at the terrain, it looks like the moon. There's nothing there. Those palm trees that you see in that video, they have been irrigated with drip irrigation from about 100 kilometers away. It was the most amazing encounter I've ever had in my life. And it was total chaos. But I recognized the hand of God. And I just stood there and I was, I don't know if I was crying, laughing, probably both. 
People were running for. They were speaking in all different languages. Now, isn't that a coincidence? They were speaking in, in, in Japanese. They were speaking in, in French. They were speaking in Spanish. I heard Germans, Chinese were screaming. Some of them were kneeling. Some of them were lying in the dust. And it started to rain and the wind just blew. A young Japanese guy ran to the front. And he shouted, I heard this only after, fire, fire. <laughs> and there was a big Norwegian, Scandinavian. His name is Jan, with a big beard, a huge man. And the uh, only thing he was short of was that helmet with the horns, you know. But he was standing there and he had an OB truck. He brought that truck all the way from Scandinavia every year. And he used to film the whole thing. And this little Japanese is saying to him, fire, fire. And he said, yeah, your Holy Spirit. No, 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 fire. He turned around. His OB truck was on fire. The wires were touching and sparks were flying everywhere. You know, I want to say something to you, young person. I want to say something to you, old person. Don't ever put God in a box. God will not be contained. In fact, as I'm preaching this message, I can feel the presence of God in this room with my cameraman, my producers and my... Sonia, I want to tell you, I'm tired of holding back the Lord. You know that the, the, the stage was shaking so much. It was a massive stage. It had a steel structure with all the lights on. And it was going back and forth. Okay. The Jewish um, workers who put that stage up, they were running forward and they were throwing ropes up to the top to try and hold it from falling down. They were shouting to me in broken English, tell them to go back, go back. It's going to fall. I've never told a man in my life to go back from an altar call. <laughs> oh, Jesus visited us that night. It was, it was one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had in my entire life. You know what one man said to me? A man in England, a very dear friend, David. David Harper said to me, but Angus, you know the thing that, that uh, impressed me the most about that whole story? I said, what? He says that you went forward and you said, Lord, do it again. I said, why? He said, because what would have happened if God didn't do it again? You would have had egg all over your face. So what? So what? I had egg over my face all my life until I gave my life to Jesus. Why can't I have egg over my face now for Jesus? The thought never even entered my mind. I was so overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. Just say the word, Lord, and my servant will be healed. When God tells you and you're walking down the street and you see somebody that's down and out, somebody that's sick, and the Holy Spirit says, pray for him, pray for him. Yeah, but Uncle Angus, what happens if he, what, what, what happens if what? If he doesn't get healed? Well, that's not your business, is it? Who's the healer? Jesus is the healer. Who's the miracle worker? Jesus is the miracle worker. Who brought the Russian mighty wind? The Holy Spirit brought the Russian mighty wind. You know that Angus Buckins' name wasn't even mentioned that night. No one was even interested in me. They were all encapsulated by the presence of the Holy Ghost. It was the most amazing meeting. You know, I went up to my, back up to Jerusalem afterwards, eventually when we finished. And I don't remember when we finished, we couldn't see each other in the dust and the rain. And the crying and the laughing, there was no preaching. I got in that taxi or whatever it was that took me back to my hotel up in Jerusalem. I went and had a shower. I was in another world. I've never experienced anything like it. I went and lay on my bed. And I put my headphones over my ears and I lay back on my bed. And I played some beautiful Christian music. And I want to tell you, I did not sleep that night. I could not sleep. I just lay in the presence that I just told Jesus how much I loved him. And I cried and I laughed and I cried again and I laughed again. And I woke up. Well, I didn't even have to wake up. The next morning I went down for breakfast after having a shower. I was fresh. I wasn't tired. And people were just talking all over the place about what God did last night. We must decrease, see, so that he can increase. That's what John the Baptist said. And Jesus said, there's never been a man born from the womb of a woman who is greater than John the Baptist. I want to say to you, your biggest restriction to the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life is you.
That's right. And me. And when you can die to self, and then Christ starts to live in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27, then you will see things happen. You don't have to conjure things up. You don't have to make things happen. It distresses me when I see people trying to do that from the platform, trying to work people up. You don't have to do that. You just have to hand over to the Holy Spirit and He'll do it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you in a minute. And I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will give you a deposit of faith that will shake the devil once and for all right out of your life. No more depression, no more stress, no more doubt, no more fear. I've not given you a spirit of fear, he said, but of power, of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. And so that's my story. That's my testimony. You can believe it or you can disbelieve it. But I want to tell you one thing. That particular night, I had 5,000 witnesses. And I think some of you watching this program were probably there. And maybe you have got a different angle. Maybe you saw it in a different way. But I want to tell you, it was Holy Ghost <laughs> chaos. But it was beautiful, wasn't it? Hey? You know, you, you know, you won't believe what I'm going to tell you as I close. People wrote to me and said, no, you rigged it. That was all rigged up. The only way we could have rigged that was to have got a, a jumbo 747 jet and backed it up against the platform and asked the pilot to put the full burners on. That's the only way we could have got that. No, folks, that was Jesus. Others will say, yeah, but it, it does rain there. And the wind does blow. Yes, it does. But at that very moment, why didn't it rain and blow an hour before the service? Or an hour after the service? Or just before the service? Why, when I walked around from the platform, did that rushing mighty wind come? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus Christ did it. Why? Because we asked Him in faith. So, Father, in faith, I pray for every person watching this program that you'll increase their faith today. Lord Jesus, you are not a figment of our imagination. Lord, you are more real to me than those people watching this program. And I thank you, Lord, that through this story, this testimony, which gives all the praise, all the honor and all the glory to Jesus, Lord, that it will impact my friends, that they will know beyond any shadow of a doubt that there is a God. And his son's name's Jesus, and he has a Holy Spirit, and he was there that night. Amen. Goodbye. Thank you for watching today's message by Angus Bucket. We trust that you were blessed. For more information about Shalom Ministries or upcoming events, please visit angusbucket.co.za. Have you downloaded the free Uncle Angus mobile app yet? You can enjoy more messages like this as well as exclusive content direct to your device. See you next time. Goodbye.